Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent, and today we're finishing our Planescape journey by visiting the very center of the Great Wheel, the Outlands and Sigil. Now the Outlands is a flat disk of land that is in the center of the Great Wheel cosmology. It's kind of like the spokes of the wheel, the fulcrum of the outer planes. It is a plane of neutrality, incorporating little bits of the planes, but keeping them all in balance. The terrain varies with prairies, mountains, and shallow rivers. Around the outside edge are gate towns, 16 settlements built around a portal that leads to the outer planes. Each town shares the characteristics of the plane where the gate leads. So if one knows where these portals are, it is possible to travel across the Great Wheel rather than around it. So far, we've talked about planar travel as floating along the River Styx or the River Oceanus, and then there are portals that lead to adjacent realms, but to travel directly from Aboria to the Abyss would be impossible unless there somehow existed a connecting portal between the two. If adventurers find the right path, they can cut across the outlands to reach their destination rather than going around the Great Wheel. The plane has a neutralizing effect that keeps it true neutral. Although the law, chaos, good, and evil can bleed through, overall the plane is neutral, balancing these forces with one another. This neutralizing effect touches weapons and spells too, reducing all healing and damage to the minimum possible while having no effect on strength or magical bonuses. Magic itself is gradually neutralized as you approach the center of the plane. High level spells cease to function and then the closer you get to the center, lower level spells would begin to fail. Until finally even first level spells will not function. This applies to divine magic as well. And because of this, the center has become a meeting place or common ground used by intelligent species of the outer planes. Creatures of differing alignments meet here to be on equal ground. There are no native species to the outlands, but plenty of other creatures native to the plains make their lives here. The center of this plane contains a giant spire on top of which is Sigil. Sigil, also known as the Cage or the City of Doors, is a city-state and supposedly the center of the multiverse. It is a donut-shaped realm that hovers just above the giant spire at the top of the Outlands. That donut shape in mathematical terms is called a torus. A torus is the product of two circles, one touching another, creating that familiar donut shape. I won't get into all the math here because, well, it's probably above me and it's not that important, but still it's kind of cool that they took this shape to represent Sigil rather than a traditional sphere. There is no sky in Sigil, just an all-pervasive light that waxes and wanes to create night and day. There are no entrances to Sigil except via portals. This gives it the name of the cage, as the place can become a prison if you don't have a portal key. Anything could be a portal, really, an archway, a door, a barrel hoop, a picture frame. They could take you anywhere in the multiverse or into the next room, which I guess is what doorways do already, uh, but you get my point. Having a portal key is very important. Regular teleportation spells are blocked in Sigil. Also, you're unable to conjure anything from another plane of existence here. The City of Doors could easily be considered the City of Locked Doors. The ability to travel anywhere, if you have the correct key. Sigil is divided up into six districts or wards. The Clerk's Ward, which is home to the bureaucrats and middleman. The Hive Ward, which is the slum and home to the poor and rogues. The Ladies' Ward, home to the richest elites and Sigil's government officials. The Lower Ward, which is the industrial district. And the Market, home to, well, a market. Traders, craftsmen, guild members, etc. The city is a plane unto itself, existing outside the rest of the universe, but intricately connected to it through unnumbered planner portals. It's a filthy, noisy city with smoke-choked alleyways and crowded streets. The residents in Sigil are diverse to say the least. All manner of creatures live here. It's not uncommon to see angels and devils, drow and aladrin, githyanki and mind flares pass one another on the street with barely a glance. The inhabitants of Sigil reflect the inhabitants of the universe. There is no one native to Sigil. All have migrated here, but those that do live here live in peace out of fear of the Lady of Pain. Sigil is controlled or run by an entity known as the Lady of Pain. She runs the show, but not in a direct way like a mayor or a queen. However, never forget, Sigil is hers. Many people believe that she is the one that keeps everything running. Some say she pulls fresh air from the plane of air and water from the plane of water to keep Sigil alive. The touch of her gaze causes wounds to spout blood, and her smallest gesture can banish someone or something into an endless maze spawned in a pocket dimension. Her presence is said to prevent deities, demon princes, and primordials from entering the City of Doors. Finally, I'd like to talk about the Far Realm. 
also called the outside, it's the plane that is outside the standard cosmology. It's comprised of an infinite number of very thin layers, ranging from an inch to a mile in thickness, each separated from the next about 10 feet. It's the space beyond the planes, a terrifying alien realm. The far realm is beyond the already difficult to comprehend multiverse. Mortal or immortal, Whoever has attempted to comprehend the truth of the Far Realm eventually concludes that endeavor with a shattered mind at best. At worst, such people are subsumed and corrupted, becoming monsters themselves. Monsters exist here, gelatinous worms that work their way through the layers. Aboliths, mind flayers, and beholders all come from the Far Realm. Aboliths appear not unlike the forms that still exist in the Far Realm, but creatures such as Beholders and Mind Flayers have changed since being on the Material Plane for so long. Mind Flayers have adopted a much more humanoid presence since being on the Prime Material Plane. Where the realm touches the rational world, the warping pressure of the Far Realm transmutes previously inert substances. Blending realities result in horrifying corruptions, disruptions, and sometimes even birth squiggling aberrant monstrosities. The Far Realm is D&D's version of H.P. Lovecraft. The weird ancient gods that are as big as cities living out in the Far Realm, unaware of the Prime Material Plane, and us small players can't even comprehend their existence. And that's it. We finished the cosmology. Maybe in the future I'll expand on some of these realms. I know I got a lot of comments about missing information or just people wanting more information. For now, I think I'm done, but we can always revisit them in the future. I think I'll go back to what random Forgotten Realms lore I can dig up, and I'll keep researching if you guys keep watching. Thanks again, everyone, and I will see you in the next video.